Guys, today marks the 10th anniversary of Eddie Guerrero's death. 10 years ago today, Eddie Guerrero died and the wrestling world just cried and cried. By the way, forgive me if I get emotional with this because it was freaking Eddie Guerrero, but fuck it. I'll get emotional, it gets emotional. I don't care. Anyways, what can you say about Eddie Guerrero? Eddie was the goddamn man. Funny as hell, always on the screen to watch. Looked like he was having a hell of a time even though you knew backstage he was in constant pain. My God, the stories you hear like that guy is, could not even move but when he finally went out onto the crowd, he did not show it. I don't know how that guy did it, but fuck. And considering that he battled his demons long time ago with alcohol and drugs and was clean for that for a, quite a number of years, which came back to bite him in the ass because it gave him a massive heart attack and he died in the bathroom of a hotel while brushing his teeth. What can you say? The guy survived a huge amount of crap. Especially, he almost died from a car crash back in WCW. I like to remember Eddie Guerrero. He was a special man. I'll always own hard and all, but we're talking about Eddie Guerrero today. I still love the fact that when he first debuted in the WWF as the Radicals. Okay, I'm going to say this. WCW, I haven't watched that much. I'm trying to watch a lot of WCW from back in the day, but I never saw Eddie Guerrero in his prime in WCW. I've seen some matches like Mask versus Title. I think it was Halloween Havoc it was him and Rey Mysterio Jr. Classic. Him against Jericho, classic. I missed a bunch of his stuff like the LWO. He was in the Latino World Order. Yeah, he was. And him taking off the masks of every luchador. <laughs> Oh, what a trip. But most fondly, I remember him from the WWF days when he came in with the Radicals. And starting the whole Mamacita shit. How can you not love that? Mamacita, fuck. Him in China. Hell, he could be put with anyone and he create magic. But then, uh, yeah, he got fired the first time around because, like, what was it? He was... On drugs, yeah, he was on drugs that led to his first firing. And then he came back after and came, won his, into a solid program with Rob Van Dam. Frog Splash versus the Frog Splash. You sure guys should watch that. And also he came back during Edmonton, during the ladder match. Rob Van Dam, I forget who it was. That was it, wasn't it? Or was that, you no, know, it was later. Eddie and RVD had a ladder match later in Edmonton where some prick came running in and got banned from Rexall Place. Yeah, that's the one. Or am I getting my stories wrong? It's been a while. It's been a while. Remember, it's like, man, the Eddie Guerrero moments in WWF slash WWE. They were so awesome. Los Guerreros, you lie, your cheat, your steal, the vignettes that they started when they first started that stuff. They were supposed to be bad guys, but the crowd loved them and they turned into good guys. In winning the United States title... Him and John Cena having a magnificent match. The Fatal 4-Way at SummerSlam was Rhino, Chris Benoit. Oh, I mentioned his name. The name that should not be mentioned. Fuck you, WWE. I'll, name, I'll say his name if I want to. Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit. And Tajiri. The Fatal 4-Way classic matches. And of course, the big moment where Eddie finally won the WWE title against Brock Lesnar. I'm going to be honest with you, I was megaly surprised about that night. I kind of knew, well I didn't know that he was going to win, like, it was set to happen because like they were planning on doing Kurt Angle versus Eddie Guerrero at WrestleMania 20 and Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg, so I don't know how it was like, I thought, I was like, maybe they'll fuck this up and not give the title to Eddie, but they did and that was an awesome moment. It's Eddie Guerrero, how can you go wrong with that? And his matches, man, like, when he, like, has a chair and the referee's not looking and all of a sudden he's about to turn and Eddie gives the chair to his opponent and the referee looks and he falls down. <laughs> Classic Eddie. It's like the referee looks at the guy and he's like, what the fuck are you doing with the chair? And the guy's go, no, it's not me. Uh, <laughs> oh, Eddie Guerrero was hilarious. 
or was it was that one time on SmackDown where he was in a six man tag? Him and two other guys, he was a bad guy against Rikishi, Edge, and I forget who else. But yeah, it was like all the good guys were beating up on the bad guys. Eddie was out somewhere. Then he came in, he's like, did, he's pretending he didn't know where he was. He's like, oh, what's going on here? Turns around, sees the three guys just looking at him, he's like about to beat his ass. And he beat Eddie. <laughs> he just turns, he just goes up to them, puts his arm around Rikishi, and goes like, looks like, it's like, man, what are we doing here, guys? Come on, this ain't fun. It's like, look at these guys. Just shooting the shit with them. Try to walk away, and the Rikishi and Edge and whoever else was there was just giving him his look, and they started beating his ass. Oh my god, Eddie Guerrero was so much fucking. Like I said, emotional. And then you get the day he died. What do you have to say about that? Every fan wept. You know, but instead of crying, we gotta think of the good times that Eddie Guerrero did on TV. Excuse me for being a pussy and crying here, but fuck, whatever, it's Eddie Guerrero. I'm not ashamed whatsoever. You know, but what really kills me is you grew up idolizing heroes, loving them. And he never thought a hero would ever die. So from one Latino to another, Eddie Guerrero rest in peace. Ten year anniversary of Eddie Guerrero's death. Take it easy guys, humanoid freak out, bye. I would find a way